Hello there, it's Friday the 10th of March 2017. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. Just before I came up, uh, actually, I was watching the um, uh, uh, the programme about the Mandarin Hotel. Have you seen it? I think it's Channel 4. And this is, this is such a prestigious five-star hotel. You and I could never afford to stay. Well, maybe I could, but I don't think you could afford to stay there. The room rates are something like £500 a night. That's for the cheapest one. The cheapest one, OK? With the uh, the maximum price, there is a, oh, it's probably a suite, actually, a, a big suite, maybe a floor, I don't know. How much per night do you think that is? How about £15,000? One night, £15,000, yes. Only very rich people in there, princesses. And um, it's, it's all about how the hotel works. It's very, very good. The I think it's called the Mandarin Oriental, which is um, uh, Knightsbridge before Piccadilly, if you're coming sort of from West London. And uh, it was, it's very interesting seeing that they have a lot of trouble with people parking because they only got like four parking spaces and people think they can just pull in and wait for as long as they want. You know, and like traffic builds up and, and all that business. Uh, they have a bloke on the concierge. Now, I'm not, I've got to say, I'm not keen on him. He's a French bloke and he's got like a black beard. Um, he is, without doubt, very, very efficient. You know, he if, if, if you are a guest, he will do his utmost to make sure that whatever you want, you will get. Doesn't matter what it is, you will get it. So that's how he is on the phone to you. When he rings up his suppliers and things like that, he's a bit sharp, a little bit abrupt, but he does get the job done. So that's him. Um, and he goes right out of his way to make sure that you're happy. And he's, he was saying, you know, over a number of years, because he's been there 17 years, you get to know regular people, because people do tend to go back to the same place all the time. I mean, I've been to Australia five times, I think Florida, I think I've been there five times. You do tend to go back to the same place. You know, if I was to go to Florida again, I'd probably seek out the same hotel that I went uh, to a couple of years ago with my nephew Jimmy. I mean, that was a nice, nice hotel. It was only, I think, probably about three star, but uh, that doesn't bother me. You know, I'm quite happy as long as I've got a, a bed, a warm bed and, and, and a shower and a television and somewhere to make tea. Most importantly, that should be at the top of the list. The, <laughs> the tea thing needs to be at the top of the list. Then I'm happy. Of course, you haven't got to worry about that, anything like that in the, um, in the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. There's one customer that he knew was coming and he comes over... I think every year. And he's a watch collector. He buys these very expensive watches. And um, so the bloke's come in and he's sitting in the lounge area. And that, that French concierge, what was his name? Frances it might be Francesca, something like that. Oh, I can't remember. It doesn't matter anyway. Uh, the, the concierge came over and said, I hope you don't mind, sir. I took the liberty of seeking out some watches before you got here. And he gets his smartphone out and starts flicking through these. Yeah, well, that one's 1.2 million that one's 700,000 and, and things like that. And uh, the bloke actually had a budget of 450,000. 450,000 pounds to spend on watch or a watch. Watches, a watch, I don't know what he was, what, what he bought in the end. But it was good that, you know, the concierge, he, he, he knows this bloke comes every year, and when he sees his name comes up, he's, he's gone out and, and looked for... And it's all part of a wonderful service that they provide there. If you've got the money, it just shows you, if you've got the money, you can have anything you want at all. Anything at all. Um, I did love an old rich lady. They did manage to get some interviews with some of the, uh, some of the guests in there. Of course, not everyone would want to be interviewed. I'd, I'd be happy with it. I would just wish someone would talk to me, to be honest. You know, no one's talking to me. Who's talking to me? Oh, by the way, have you noticed anything? It's got a bit wider, hasn't it? The other bit of material arrived. Uh, but you can see the join, unfortunately. So what I think I'm going to do is move the calendar underneath the Union Jack. The Union Jack, incidentally, there that you can see. OK, that's virtual. That's not really there. Watch. Hang on a minute. I sh oh, can I do this? Uh, oh, let's try that. 
Yes, there you go. So that, that Union Jack isn't really there, you see. So you do that, and, and it's there like that. Um, why has that got a little... Oh, that's better. That's better. Um, so I might move the calendar underneath the Union Jack. And I could have put the Barry picture above the Union Jack, although I think you've got a little live thing there. And um, maybe something else there. So that's what I'm going to do there. Anyway, back to this. So there was a little... Uh, not, not a little old lady, a, a large... Large elderly lady, it doesn't matter what they look like. I don't know why I even mentioned little or large. It doesn't matter. There was an elderly lady there who was really nice. And um, they were interviewing her. She says, well, of course, you know, it's wonderful. There's such a large difference between staying in luxury hotels and youth hostels. <laughs> I thought to myself, I bet there is. Now, I used to work at a wonderful place called Belushi's. Obviously, I worked in the bar area, but what it was basically is youth hostels. It was a youth, not it's kind of halfway between a hostel and a hotel, really. Would I say that? No, no, it was a hostel. It was a hostel. So you you had rooms where generally young people, although there were some older people, there certainly were occasionally people of my age and slightly older staying at these places. It's not just about young people, but, you know... 90, 98 percent young people. They would they would stay in there and I'd be in the bar area doing the karaoke or the um, or the club night, you know, the, the music for a disco or something like that. And uh, you, you could have eight, 10, 12 people sleeping in one reasonably large room on bunk beds. You know, you could be at the bottom and there could be a bloke or a woman above us. I, I, I suppose. Would they be mixed? I don't know if the dormitories were mixed or not. No, they can't have been. Is that is that legal? I don't know. Uh, anyway, say 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 it's all blokes. Okay, so you you might be on the bottom. There'd be a bloke up there, and there'd be another one on top, and you wouldn't know each other. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it must have stank in those places first thing in the morning, mustn't it? You know, I couldn't I couldn't do it like that. I mean, I used to go camping with the scouts. And we used to share a tent. There'd be four or five of us in a tent. But we were like 13, 14, 15 years old. I think you get to a point. Uh, mine was quite... Uh, 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 16. After 16, I couldn't share a room with anyone. No. Or a tent. Come to that. I just don't think I could do it. No. I certainly couldn't go, you know, it was certainly in my 20s and share a, share a hostel with, with 10 other people in the same room. Oh, God, how could you even sleep? You've only got to have one poor sod snoring. In. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> you only got to have one person snoring and that would be the end of it, wouldn't it? Yes. So that was the old rich lady in there. And there was a new concierge who started and was being instructed by the French guy who was... Um, at, but the new one was English. He was, he was English. He came from a council housing estate in... I think he said Islington somewhere. Um, he said, uh, and he's worked up. He never went to university or anything like that. Same as myself. I, I, I really don't believe in all this this ridiculous thing that Tony Blair come out, that all, all people, virtually all people should go to university, didn't they? Do you remember that? Just a total and utter waste of time for, I would say, 50% of the people at least. If I'd have gone to university, I would have, I would have sat there. I would have been bored senseless. University is not for everyone. And, of course, you can go through the whole system and not have a decent job at the end of it. Then the, then it was a waste of time. Plus, you've got forty or £50,000 worth of debt. Can you just imagine that? Coming out... This is quite normal now. This is quite normal now. Children... Not children. Young people come out of university. They owe £30,000, £40,000, £50,000. God's sake, man. Um... So the new concierge, he started and he was being instructed by the French guy and um, he was learning, learning on the job, so to speak. And then on his day off, what a lovely thing to do. He took his mum, no, he took his nan into the hotel for afternoon tea, I think it was, or, or perhaps morning breakfast. And it's, it's all very wonderful. It really is. I mean, it's a lovely place. The Oriental Mandarin Hotel. I think that's the correct title. Look, let me look it up for you. I don't want to give you the wrong blooming title. What if you want to stay there? <laughs> or Oriental Mandarin Hotel. Let's see if let's see if that comes up. That that should come up. There it is. There it is. Luxury. There it is. Mandarin Oriental Hyde Park, sixty six Knightsbridge. That's the one. Look it up. Mandarin Oriental Hyde Park, London. 
66 Knightsbridge. You should go there. You can, if you don't want to stay there, you can go to these wonderful hotels and just experience a little bit of luxury in the afternoon. Go to one of their afternoon teas. Now, funnily enough, my mate was round here earlier and we were watching this programme together. And I said, how do you fancy going tea there for your birthday? Because I've got, he wore, he's already ordered his birthday present for me. He wants those Apple iPhone ear things with no wires. I don't know what they're called. iPads. Maybe iPad. No, not iPads. Possibly iPods. Lot of things. That's what he wants for his birthday. I said, would you fancy going there as well for an afternoon tea for your birthday? You know, and you can do this. Uh, of course, it's not cheap. But it's cheaper than staying there, let me tell you. I think it starts at about £55 each and goes up to about 88 something like that. And you could, if you're in America and you've got, you know, you've got your holiday money, then this would be a wonderful thing for you to do in the afternoon. Choose any of the hotels. That's, of course, top end. But you could go for afternoon tea in, in one of the large shops. Harrods, perhaps. Fortnum & Mason's. And it's an afternoon out. It really is. Just like going, perhaps, if I went to Florida to the theme park for the day. Well, for an afternoon, you could go here. And it's lovely. For, for 40, 50, I think some of them are about £35, pounds, depending on where you go. I think the Fortnum & Mason one is about £35, £40 pounds for afternoon tea. And you get a selection. You choose your tea. Or you can have a selection of different teas. And it just keeps coming. You know, you don't just get one. You finish it, another one will come. Uh, you get a plate of, uh, uh, like, a, a little stack of these sandwiches, you know, and they're like little little sandwiches. And again, you know, you want more, that's okay. That You just ask. That's all in the price. It doesn't cost you any more to get more sandwiches. And little cakes and things. And then you can have, uh, you can add extras to it if you want a glass of champagne. It's always very nice to have that if you're out somewhere like that. But you want to experience that piece of luxury that those really really very, very rich people have, then you can in an afternoon. The rooms in this place are just so wonderful. There was um, a, a Chinese wedding there as well. And uh, uh, they, they look so sweet together. Uh, the bloke, very good looking man, I have to say. Uh, not old, Chinese man, uh, marrying his uh, uh, Chinese girl. And she was lovely as well. Oh, she, and she was full of fun. She was just a fun person. And the two of them really looked like they belonged together. Isn't it lovely when you see something like that? I mean, so many times I'm out somewhere and you might see a couple, um, uh, straight or gay, doesn't matter. You might see a couple together and you think, oh, you two really aren't suited to each other. Or when they're sitting there rowing all the time and you think, why are you even together like that? You know, I mean, I'd, I mean probably I'm on my own. I, I won't row, you see. I walk away. I walk away, and that's probably the wrong thing to do. You should stand and fight your corner. we got to fight, 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 fight to the light, or whatever it is. But it's, this Chinese couple were lovely, and he wooed her by just giving her, out, just giving her envelopes full of money. That's a good way to do it, isn't it? I might try that tonight. I'll choose someone tonight, fill up a few envelopes with some coins in, and uh, what do you mean it won't, coins won't do it? Will it not? What, fivers? How much? Fifties? Oh, I don't know about that, dear. You know, we can't be selling a house. Not quite yet. <laughs> Shall I try that tonight? Just start handing out wads of money, wad envelopes full of money and see if that gets anyone on my side, eh? <laughs> no, no house selling. Oh, do you know what? We're talking of house selling. I, 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 I often look in different areas and one of the areas I do, as, as you know, my sister lives in Lincolnshire and I'm always, at least once a week, looking, looking at houses for sale. Uh, oh, just a minute. Now. This is this is one of the estate agents that work for me. Just a minute. Hello. Hello. Oh, I can't hear anything. Hello. Hello. How strange you'd probably ring back. That's that's the the funny enough, that's the estate agent of the place I've uh, got up north. Here anyway, Excuse me a moment. Very important call. Hello. Ah, oh, I can hear you now, Joe. Couldn't hear you a minute ago. You're right, darling. <laughs> I'm always here. Worry not, I'm always here. What can I do for you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Oh, right. Wow. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. Right. Sorry, I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Oh, I'm sure that'll be all right. I'm sure that'll be all right. Yeah. What what rent are they paying in the other one? Is it the same? Really? Okay. Is it really? Do you think so? What, why do you say that then? Because, you know, I mean, obviously I'm down here. Um, it, it's a bit different down down south than it is up north, you know. Hmm. Yeah. What I like, what I like, you know, if something goes wrong, I like it fixed yesterday. And there's not a lot of, uh, there's a few, quite a lot of landlords aren't the same as me, aren't they? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, we, we, we replaced it, didn't we, last year? Yeah. Yeah. Just replaced it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I Yeah. Yeah, I thought she had, yeah. Yeah, good. Well she'd get her deposit back, wouldn't she then? <laughs> I'm sure she will. I'm sure sure she will. Do you know much about the land on that little estate? I mean, obviously, that bit next to me, I wonder if they'd sell me a bit of that. Because at some point, you know, I might want to want to go up that way. Is it? Ah, oh, right, OK. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it's monthly, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. No. All right. Right. Would well, you want to give him a 12 month thing, do you? Okay. Mm. Yeah, okay. Right, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. All right. Well, that should, I don't see that as a problem. As long as it, it you just tell them it'll go up £10 a year. That's all. It will go up £10 a year. Um, I know some do it as a percentage no i mean i'm not a greedy person as you probably realized 10 pound a year it'll go up and that's it just start them off on the, what she's on though yeah yeah okay that's perfect then right okay Yeah. All right. That's all right. I'll leave it with you, my love. It all seems to be under control, doesn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Grapevine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's one, one of those things, isn't it? Yeah, one of those things. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Joe. Yeah, lovely. Save you a few pennies. Let's have a little space in the paper for you. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yep, cheerio. Bye-bye now. Bye. Do you know, I thought about stopping. 
stopping the, the the show there and picking it up again. But you know, there's there's a bloke on the radio, Steve Allen, and often he'll be doing his show. Obviously, not in vision, like not not a television show like mine. You know, television personality here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's only radio and he can be talking and then his producer says something and he continues the conversation with the producer and you can only hear one side of it and that's why I kept the camera running there I thought to myself actually no you can make up in your own mind what's going on here I don't know if you could hear her or not but she, she's quite loud there basically I've got a, a, a little house up north and uh, an elderly lady has been there for about three years and kept it nice and spick and span. And uh, she she's given notice, so she's moving out. But the people two doors along um, have are having to leave their little house because their landlord has sold it. And they heard on the grapevine that she was going. So it looks like those down at number nine are going to be moved into my one. And um, it, it, it just all kind of makes sense, really. Uh, I'm quite a good landlord. I know I'm saying that sitting here and all landlords would say I'm a really good landlord. If something breaks, I want it fixed yesterday. Like this lady, she had a new boiler this year, at like the end of last year. She kept having problems with her boiler and I said, oh, well, that's it. You know, just put a new one in and be done with it. And um, uh, just stuff like that. I'm a pretty good landlord. When it comes to rent rises a year, I tend to put it up about 10 quid, 10 quid a month per year. So if it's like 400, next year it'll be 410. There are some landlords, as you well know, you've seen them in the papers and they come to the end of the year and they put it up 100 quid. I mean, it's, it's just greed. Bloody greedy, greedy people all the time. And why do, I, why, do they, why do they need to do that? It's just greed and it's unnecessary. As long as you've got enough ticking over to come in Make a little bit of money here, make a little bit of money there. Then you don't need to make thousands and thousands of pounds. The world will be killed by greed. I'm telling you that now. It will be. So that's what was going on there. And um, that kind of all works out nicely. And the lady goes on, say, to Monday. They want to move in on the Tuesday. How perfect can that be? Because the best thing about running... Uh, being a landlord, you don't want any gaps. So you don't want them moving out in February and some moving in April. No money coming in. So I've still got to pay the mortgage, but then there's no money coming in covering it. So it's got to come from somewhere else. So that's how it all works. That's how it all works. Believe me, if you were wanting to rent a place, you would want to rent one for me. I'm a really good... I'm blowing my own trumpet. I'm a really good landlord. I am. Anyway, uh, back to this story then. So they had a Chinese wedding. And uh, as I say, they were so nice, these people. But the people in the restaurant, they bought their own chef in. Now, usually, the hotel themselves... Uh, what's the time? Oh, gosh, have I been speaking? I'm, I'm going to finish up in a minute. Um, uh, the people in the hotel would usually do all the food. But the, the Chinese guests, uh, the Chinese um, uh, couple, had decided to bring their own chef in. So they're doing all this cooking. And then they're, they're about to take it out. And there's like eight plates of fish and great big blooming fishes on this thing with rice I think it was and um how many plates you got there and there's like eight yeah but there's nine. Oh, <laughs> and what they had to do was slice like they served the top tables you know with the whole plates of fish but the tables right at the bottom they cut the fish in half <laughs> and no one noticed <laughs> and no one noticed because on the dance floor while they were having the dinner the bride had got up and she was doing, um, oh, what's that? What's that song? Oh, gosh. Um, it, I think it was Korean. It was Korean. You know that one? Da, 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 da. Oh, what's it called now? Oh, hang on a minute. Let me see if I can find it. Hang on. What's that there? Korean song. Where is it now? Korean pop song. Korean pop song let's see if it's there please be there no it's not there is it but but you know that you know the one i mean don't you you must know the one i mean yeah you know that little that little bloke who was doing all the da, 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 and all that business and she was doing that on the dance floor so of course while they're doing that no one's noticed that the fish had been cut in half on two of the plates <laughs> uh, can you make that mistake at someone's wedding 
Terrible, terrible. So highly recommended that program. Okay, I can't remember what it's called, but it's 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 a hotel program on Channel Four, and I believe it's on Thursday nights, either Wednesday or Thursday nights. Okay, that was excellent. Uh, <clears throat> and talking of um, talking of uh, different countries, uh, another highly recommended program that I'm watching at the moment is the Real Marigold Hotel, where pensioners and they all they've all been big stars or celebrity. There's Rusty Rusty Lee's my favourite. There's that bloke from Just Just Good Friends, Paul Nicholson, and they're all pensioners now, you see. And they go to India to see if that is a, like a place that they want to retire to. And uh, one of the things they did yesterday, they went to this Indian hair... Oh, excuse me, hiccups. Uh, hair cup, hair, hair, hairdressers. These were two of the men. And while he's doing the hair, then he starts doing this to his head. And it reminded me, there's a, a, a chap who works at the hairdressers I go to. His name's Sonny. Now, he's from Pakistan, and he's such a nice person. Oh, he did make me laugh. Because he, he came from Birmingham. OK, so he'd come from Birmingham to work down here in Wokingham. And I said, what's it like living with live, living in Birmingham? I said, I said, is it all right there? He said, well, there's some nice parts and there's some horrible parts. Um, what you want to do is find the areas where the English people live, because where all the multiracials live, he said, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute... Dump. Now, this was a Pakistani man telling me this. And I'm in fits of laughter while he's telling me this. I said, ah, can you even sign it? He said, well, it's true. He said, you go down the roads where the multiracial um, uh, uh, mix is. He said, they are filthy. The streets are absolutely filthy. They just don't care. You go where the English people live. They're all nice. There's no rubbish on the floor. That's not me saying that. That was coming from uh, my Pakistani friend who cuts my hair. Anyway, so they were doing this massage and it reminded me the Pakistani guy, Sonny. His name's Sonny. I shall refer to him as Sonny, not the Pakistani guy. His name's Sonny and he's a lovely bloke. And he does this to your head. Like, really quite rough. And they started doing it on the telly. So I just imagine that's where they got... That's what must be what they do in sort of the um, uh, the Indian, Pakistani type countries. Uh, they do all these... And then he does all this head massage. And it's lovely, actually. You don't get one of those blonde-haired girls who are just about to drop another baby doing that, do you? No! Uh, Ten pounds, please. When these people uh, cut your hair... And let me think, there's a, there's a, there's a, he's, as I say, he's from Pakistan. There's a, a the young boy who I like, uh, cuts my hair and his name's Brandon. He's from, I think it's Bulgaria or Bulgaria, Romania, maybe. Uh, there's a couple of guys from Turkey. There's one from Brazil, but it must be the guy who owns it. His name's Mac and he's such a nice man. They're all really nice in there. No complaints about, there was one in there who was a bit rough. I gotta say, he was a bit good haircut, but a bit rough. Now I haven't seen them in there, him in there recently. He's probably the best looking one out of all of them. He's about about thirty, but I haven't seen him in there lately, so I think he might have gone. Um, but still, no complaints, even though he was, he was a bit rough. And they're really good at the job. And it must be that the governor that's telling them to do all these head massages, and you get this and all this business, and it's all very. Oh, I fell asleep once, dear. Oh, sorry, I nearly fell asleep once in there. Oh, my microphone's collapsed. Oh, God, what's happened here? Hang on, the, the little... Because this has all got bits of elastic on it to stop it knocking. Is that better? There we are. We can't have bangings going on while I'm doing my show, can we? So do have a watch of that as well. The Real Marigold Hotel, which I think is on BBC Two Colour on Mondays or Tuesdays, all right? OK, gang, let's do today's birthdays. Uh, happy birthday to my very, very good friend, Wayne Taylor. Now, Wayne, he would not look out of place in that real marriage uh, in the um, in the uh, in the Mandarin Oriental. He would totally be in place because uh, he works in a very nice uh, posh place as well. So happy birthday, Wayne. It says 43, dear. Sorry, have you got that right? Is it like a misprint on my uh, on my computer there, Wayne? 43, dear. Happy birthday, Wayne. Very, very close friend of mine, Wayne. Happy birthday today to Ralph Clapham. 64 years old today. Happy birthday, Ralph. Uh, Marlene Warren. Love your name, Marlene. Happy birthday. Mark Marcia Jenkins, DJ extraordinaire from... Uh, Brighton, happy birthday to you, sir. 54. God, you're the same age as me, darling. Uh, to... Oh, that's a rude word there. That's Steve. I can't say the name that it... 
I can't say the name that it says on your Facebook, Steve. 26 today. Steve used to come down to uh, Belushi's in Hammersmith, where I used to work, and we did have some fun. And there's some of the stuff that you used to come out with. I don't dare mention it on the programme. But happy birthday, Steve. All right, that must be your little boy there with the bobble hat on. All right, happy birthday to you. Uh, Johnny Reese. Another was all the DJ's birthdays today, isn't it? Johnny Reese, happy birthday, Johnny. And uh, Steve Lambert, who I used to work with in Clapham. He now lives uh, in Australia. He was Australian anyway, uh, but he's moved over here for a while, worked uh, throughout London and then uh, went back to Australia. And generally, when I go to Australia, I try and look him up and we meet out for a, meet, meet up for a, a little drink or a night out somewhere, don't we? So happy birthday, you, Steve. Uh, here comes the song... Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthdays, boys and girls. Uh, tonight it's Friday night, so I'll be hosting karaoke tonight at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. It's a great night. Such friendly crowd. It's a really nice crowd in there on a Friday that we've built up. Starts at half past eight and finishes at 12 midnight. If you want to sing, you need to get your song in by about 10 o'clock. I mean, it really gets that busy, OK? It's no use coming in at half eleven. Oh, please, please, can I sing? Can you squeeze me in? No, because it's not fair on everyone else who's been sitting there for two hours waiting to sing. So I'm afraid the answer's no. You need to get there quite early, OK? So tonight, it's karaoke at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, every Friday from 8.30 until um, uh, 12 midnight. That's it today. Thank you very much for watching and listening to the show. Hopefully it's Saturday tomorrow, so hopefully uh, I'll be doing a little bit of a live show tomorrow at some point, OK? See you soon. Cheerio.